Good morning, and welcome to Inspired Yoga at Home, and welcome to my home. My name is Sarah, and I teach at Inspired Studio on Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And this class will follow my normal format, um, maybe a little bit easier, just because we're at home, and um, it feels good to maybe be a little bit more relaxed for this particular class. So if you're new, that's fine, jump right in. Um, and if you're a regular, this should be, um, like I said, very familiar to you. If you have your own props, um, you might wanna make sure that you have your blocks and a strap handy. Um, and if you don't have a strap, a necktie or a scarf or even a bathroom towel works really nice um, as well. So we'll start in our Tadasana pose today. Starting in with the feet, maybe just glancing down at the feet, creating a nice stable base for yourself, lifting up the toes perhaps, spreading them out nice and wide and placing them back down on your mat. Next, we come up to the legs, making sure the legs are straight, strong, but the knees are slightly bent and the joint is nice and soft. Coming up to the hips next, maybe we take the pelvis and we tilt it up as we elongate the tailbone in the back. Neck, shoulders come up to the ears, round back and down. Palms facing forward. Crown of the head then reaching right up to the ceiling as we give the chin a gentle tuck to elongate the spine and the neck. And then if you feel safe, closing your eyes. And then just bringing your attention to your breath, focusing on your inhales all the way down into the belly and then complete exhales as you allow every last drop of air to leave. And we'll be here for a few moments in our Tadasana, our mountain pose, focusing on our strength and focusing on our breath. Take one more full breath here in through the nose. And then your complete exhale. As we slowly open the eyes, taking the feet just a little bit wider. We'll inhale, reaching the arms up and overhead as we lightly grab onto one wrist, pulling the body gently over to one side. Working on keeping the shoulder that's on top pulling open and back so we're not collapsing through the chest. We'll have them come right back through the center as we grab the opposite wrist and then pulling the body the other direction, creating a nice gentle arc here, stretching the ribs, the obliques. Nice job, everyone. Good. Next inhale brings us right back up through the center. We release the arms. Bringing the hands back behind the body, interlacing the fingers, pressing the palms down to the earth as you open up the chest, looking up to the sky. Keeping your breath, again, steady and even. Good, then releasing the palms. We'll reach the arms again up and overhead, interlacing the fingers again, this time flipping the palms to face up to the sky and just reaching up, finding a little extra length here. And then releasing the hands again. Excellent job. We'll bring the hands to rest on the thighs as we bend through the knees 
coming into a standing cat cow. And inhale, we'll let the belly drop as we gaze up to the sky. And then on our exhale, we round through the back, tucking the chin. Good, again, inhale, looking up. Exhale, we tuck and round. Finding your breath, moving at your pace here. Good. Let's take one more full round and we'll meet in our nice rounded back. And as we make our way there, just letting the hands dangle down towards the toes. Or perhaps we find opposite elbows as we just hold here in our Uttanasana. Knees again are soft, but enjoy a nice stretch for the back of the leg. Good. And then we'll slowly, slowly start to round ourselves up. Letting our head be the very last thing to make its way up. Rolling the shoulders back and down. And we'll come to our breath of joy to create a little bit of heat as we continue to warm up here. So for breath of joy, it's three short inhales. We inhale straight up, inhale straight out, inhale all the way up, and then a nice deep exhale as we bend through the knees, sweeping the arms back behind. Good. And then inhale, 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 and exhale. Inhale, 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 exhale. Good. Inhale. Inhale, inhale, exhale, in, 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 and out. Good. A few more times here. Just building up nice heat in the body. Good. In, in, and out. Maybe a little quicker here. Inhale, 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 exhale. One more time. In, 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 and out. Good. And then coming back up to stand, rolling the shoulders a few more times here. And I will play around a little bit with our Uttanasana and our Utkatasana, our chair pose and our forward fold. So we'll bring the hands to start into our prayer. As we look back down at the feet, maybe bringing them a little bit closer together, more like hip width apart. And then starting to bend through the knees, sitting the hips back like you're sitting into a chair, finding your Utkatasana. Now, staying right here if you like with the arms, or we can reach the arms out and up by the ears. Good, making sure the weight is back in the heels, maybe even slightly lifting the toes. Keep breathing. Good, and then we'll lower the arms down and the hands by the feet as we straighten through the legs into our Uttanasana forward fold. Good, and then we'll round ourselves all the way up again, nice and slow. Head is the last thing to make its way up. And then as we come back to stand, again, either choosing your arms at your chest or arms up by the ears as you sit the hips back, coming back to your Ukatasana. Holding, holding, holding. Really feeling the quadriceps, the tops of the thighs here working to support you. Good, and then we'll release the hands down by the feet as we straighten through the legs. Taking a moment here in your Uttanasana to enjoy that nice stretch and feel the release of all the work. And we'll round ourselves up again nice and slow. We'll take that movement again, either arms up or at heart center, sitting the hips back here. Excellent. A few more breaths, holding, holding. Good. And then releasing the hands down by the feet, straightening through the legs. And then rounding yourself again all the way up nice and slow. Wonderful. Now, we'll find the back of our mat here. We'll work our way through a few rounds of half sun salutations. 
before we come down onto the mat. So just start, we inhale nice and deep as we lift the arm. Exhale, swan dive all the way down. Good, inhale, we take a half lift, flattening out the back. And then exhale, we fold in. Next inhale, lifts us all the way back up to stand, arms coming up and overhead. And exhale, we release. Good, again, inhale, reaching up. Exhale, swan dive all the way down. Inhale, we half lift. Exhale, we fold. And then inhale, reaching all the way back up with the arms up and overhead. And exhale, release. A few more rounds here, guys. Excellent. Inhaling, reaching up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. And then lifting all the way back up on the next inhale. Arms up and overhead, and exhale, release. This time again, we'll reach up as we inhale. Exhale, swan dive down. This time we're going to bend the knees as much as we need to get the hands all the way down onto the mat. And we'll walk the feet just a little bit wider. And then the hands are going to walk out as we come into down dog. Good. So pressing down through the heels, maybe pedaling out one foot at a time if you like. Arms straight, head just resting gently there between the upper arms. We'll be here for a few breaths. Good. Now if you were finding yourself with any movement here, we'll bring that to a stop as we lower the knees down to the mat, coming to our tabletop position here, all fours. We'll take our right leg out behind. I'm gonna come a little bit more forward here. As we curl the toes under there in the back and just pressing through the right heel so you can feel a nice stretch through the Achilles, through the calf. Remember to keep your breath going. Good. And then as we inhale, we'll lift the right leg up just so that it's parallel with the spine. Crossing the leg back behind the body and then lowering the toes. So your right toes are going to rest off of the mat. And then you're going to take your head and look over your left shoulder to find the left toes. So you feel an opening through the right rib cage, the right side of the neck. Good, then we'll bring the head right back through the center. We'll lift the right leg, bringing it back through the center and lowering it down. Good, now we'll move to the other side as we take the left leg out behind, curling the toes under, pressing down through the heel. Good, feeling a nice stretch to the back of the left leg. And then we'll lift the left leg again, parallel to the spine, crossing the left leg back behind, lowering the toes off the mat, and then looking over the right shoulder to maybe find the toes, feeling an opening through the left side of your body. Good, then bringing that head right back through the center, lifting the left leg and lowering it down. Coming back to our tabletop, this time they're walking the hands just slightly in front of the shoulder, so you're kind of finding yourself reaching out here. We'll find a little movement and a little bit of core work as we come forward into our half plank, holding nice and strong, really engaging through the abdominals. And then as you exhale, using to pull you back almost into your child's pose, but stopping just short so you feel that nice stretch across the upper body. Good, and then your inhale brings you back forward, holding, 
and exhale sits you back. Finding your breath, moving at your pace, really making sure to focus on the abdominals with each movement. Really getting a nice core workout there. Excellent. We'll come forward one more time here. And this time as we exhale, when we sit back, we're going to let ourselves come all the way down into our child's pose. Bringing the knees as wide as you like, reaching the arms out, or perhaps we make a pillow here with the forearms and rest the forehead. Just taking this moment to rest, focusing in on the breath again. And remembering too, at any point during class, if you need to grab a sip of water, please feel free to do that. One more breath here in our child's pose. <clears throat> And then we'll press ourselves up to a, a seated position. Coming down, we'll find our sukhas in a pose. Just our nice, easy seat. We'll start by holding gently onto the knees as we take some seated cat-cow movement. Inhale, looking up, arching through the back. And then exhale, tucking the chin, rounding through. Hold it again. Inhale, looking up. Exhale, tuck and round. And same thing here, finding your breath moving at your pace. We'll go through one more full rotation here. And then we'll come right back through the center, sitting up nice and tall right there up on the sit bones, sitting bones rather. And then inhale, we'll reach our arms up and overhead as we exhale, folding in, just feeling a nice stretch there as you round through the back. Noticing that the leg you have crossed in front, getting a little extra stretch there through the outside of the right thigh into the IT band and the glute. Good, and then working the hands back in here. We'll take the legs. We're going to switch up the fold of the legs so the opposite leg is now in front. And adjusting so we're right there up on the sitting bones. And we're going to reach for either our strap, our tie, or whatever we're using here at home. Grabbing it in one hand, placing it right in front of the nose, and then extending the opposite arm straight out. It just gives us a good um, distance for our grip here. And as we inhale, then we'll lift the arms up and overhead, trying to keep the arms as straight as you can, relaxing through the shoulders. And then as you have the strap right overhead, start to slowly bring it back a little bit further so you feel a really nice opening there through the chest, through the upper arms, maybe even into the shoulders. Take it nice and easy. Remember, if you haven't been doing yoga, like you're used to, this might feel a little bit different. So just be gentle with yourself. Keep the breath flowing in and out. Maybe after a few breaths, you find you can pull back a little bit further. A few more breaths here. Excellent. And then we'll bring the strap so it's right back up and overhead. And we'll fold ourselves over to one side. Really enjoying that nice stretch. Good. 
go right back through the center here, and then we'll fold over the other way. Good, and right back up through the center. We'll release the strap down. We can set the strap over to the side as we take the legs then, extending the legs out straight in front, moving into our Kashimotanasana. So sitting up right there. Now we might need the strap again if we want to help ourselves create a little extra length to reach the toes. Otherwise we'll inhale and exhale, folding in, binding the shins, binding the toes. Or like I said, if you want, grabbing that strap along the bottoms of the feet helps you to create just that little extra bit of length. As this pose is not about getting the nose down to the knees, but creating length throughout your whole back body, reaching the crown of the head up and away. Using your breath to help you sink down just a little bit deeper. Good. And then we'll release the toes as we round ourselves up. We'll take the left leg, we'll bend the left leg in here, reaching the right arm straight out, hugging the elbow to the knee as we take our left hand back behind, taking a gentle twist, sitting up nice and tall, keeping our extended right leg active. And like I said, being gentle here with our first twist, we're gonna work through a progression of twists here. So knowing that we'll have the opportunity to go deeper. <clears throat> and then we'll rotate all the way back through the center as we then take the foot and reach it up and over the leg, arm reaching out, hugging opposite elbow, left hand coming back behind. Now here you can stay just like this, or if you like to release the elbow to the outside of the knee. And as we breathe, we wanna think inhale, brings us up taller, exhale, twists us in deeper. Good, and then we'll come right back through the center. And we'll let our cross leg go out a little bit looser here as we bring the bottom leg in, bringing the heel up towards the glute, and then the left leg goes up and over, placing the sole of the foot as flat as we can there on the mat, reaching the right arm, hugging in the opposite knee, and then bringing the hand back behind. So just getting a really nice stretch there through the glute, the IT band, the hips. And the, if we like, we can release the elbow here as well to the outer part of the knee. And remember, if this version doesn't work for you, then just go back to one of the previous ones. There's lots of options. And then we'll come right back here through the center. We'll unravel the legs and the feet, taking the knees, just bouncing them out slightly here as we move to the other side. So bending the right leg in, extending the opposite arm, hugging the knee, bringing our hand back behind. Again, as we keep the extended leg active and sitting up nice and tall. And then coming back through the center, we'll take the foot, crossing it up and over the leg, opposite arm reaching out, hugging in, good, taking the twist here, 
Now, same thing if you like to release the elbow to the outside of the knee. You could even make your little parade wave here. Good, and then we'll come right back through the center as we prepare for that final twist as we bring the bottom leg in closer. Our cross leg comes up and over, trying to get that foot as flat as we can. Sitting up again, nice and tall, opposite elbow to knee, bringing the hand back behind, feeling the stretch again a little bit more through the hip, the glute, and the IT band. And if you like releasing the elbow again to the outside of the knee, Thinking about sitting up nice and tall. <clears throat> A few more breaths here. And then we'll come right back through the center. We'll release the legs. We'll take the legs out straight again as we move back into our Paschimottanasana. Just to stretch out through the legs, straightening them out. Again, we'll inhale, reach up, exhale, hold in. Using the strap again if you like. Really focusing on the breath to help you sink down a little bit deeper with each exhale. Good, and then we'll round ourselves up. Set the strap over to the side, and we'll come right back up to our tabletop position as we swing our legs back behind. And then curling the toes under in the back, we'll lift our hips as we come up to down dog again. Holding for just a few moments. Good. Pedaling out the feet again if you like, or just taking this time to find a moment of stillness. And from here, we're going to go ahead and bring our left foot forward between the hands, finding our low lunge position. If you need to use the hand to help bring the left foot up, go ahead, making sure the left knee is safely over the left ankle. And then we'll lower the heel in the back as we lift up for our warrior two. So checking in, making sure shoulders are directly over hips, bending through the left knee, rotating the left thigh out, arms up, shoulders relaxed as we gaze out over the left fingertips. Maybe we take a quick peek back though to make sure that the right arm is nice and level. And we'll just breathe in and out here. And moving into our wide head angle, bending the arm, resting it on the thigh, right arm coming up, pulling that right shoulder back as you're trying to create the straight line from your right fingertips to the outside blade of the right foot. Working to not put too much pressure on the arm, but using the core more to hold you and keep you stable. If you like, just lifting the arm up and away to check in there. Good. On our next inhale, our legs are going to stay just as they are, and we'll reach up. We'll bring the hand to rest on the right thigh. Left arm is going to come up as we slightly bend through the back and moving into our reverse warrior. Now our hand can stay right there on the back thigh. We can wrap it around the front of the body, or you can bring it around back behind to find the inner thigh for a bound variation. Gazing just up to the sky here. Good, and then we'll come right back in for our warrior two.
lowering the arms. <clears throat> we'll bring the toes to face forward as we come into our wide-legged position. Hands coming to rest here on the hips. Inhaling, looking up to the sky. And exhale, folds you down. Releasing the hands down to the mat. Maybe readjusting through the feet, but making sure that the weight is centered evenly on the feet. We don't want too much pressure going to the outer edges of the feet. Keep the breath going even though you're upside down. And you might want to grab a block if you like to rest the hands or the forearms on, or even perhaps the head. Or you can even walk the hands back behind the feet, taking the fingertips away from you, getting it in there a little bit deeper. We'll take one more breath here and then we'll slowly start to round ourselves up. Beautiful. And now we'll take the toes and we're going to point the toes the opposite direction and then angling the left toes in slightly as we move into our warrior two on the opposite side. So bending through the right leg, we'll lift the arms, gazing out over the right fingertips, relaxing the shoulders, pulling the left hip back. Maybe peeking back to make sure the back arm is equal. And then moving into our wide side angle as we bend down, lifting the arm up. Again, creating a straight line from our fingertips up to the outside blade of the foot. Reaching back with the shoulder and using the core to support you. Giving yourself that little test if you need. Good. Our next inhale, we'll find ourselves in our reverse warrior. So our legs are going to stay just the same. We'll rest that hand on the back thigh as we reach the opposite arm up. Gazing up to the sky. Now your options again, leaving the hand right there on the thigh, wrapping it around the front for a gentle hug, or we bring it all the way around the back of the body to find the inner thigh. Good. A few more breaths here, and then we'll come right back to our warrior two. And bringing the hands down then here to frame our right foot. So we're in our low lunge now facing the opposite direction. We'll step our right foot back, coming into down dog again here. Now, from your down dog, if you'd like, you could stay right here. You could find tabletop, child's pose, or if you want, we'll move through a vinyasa. So to vinyasa, we'll come right down into our plank pose, holding nice and strong. Elbows are going to stay nice and close to the body as we lower through chaturanga into up dog. And then to down dog. And then as you make your way through your vinyasa, we'll all take a moment to lower the knees, taking the knees nice and wide, toes touch, as we sit back for our child's pose. Again, reaching the arms out if you like, making a pillow with the forearms, or even grabbing a block to rest the forehead on. Thank you. 
Good, and then we'll come right back up here through our tabletop. Curling the toes under as we lift up for another down dog. And then walking the hands back to meet our feet. We'll hold in our Uttanasana forward fold. Again, knees soft. Just enjoying the stretch through the back of the legs. And then rounding ourselves up nice and slow. Head's the last thing again to make its way up. And then we'll come back to the center of the mat. We'll work a little standing balance here. So same thing as when you're at the studio, if you'd like to find something to hang on to, or perhaps if you have a harder surface to balance on rather than your mat, that might make it a little easier as well. And we'll practice our Vrikshasana, or our tree pose, this class. So for tree pose, lots of different options. You can be right here at your gentle kickstand, having the foot resting on the shin, or maybe bringing the foot all the way into the inner thigh. The only place you don't want to be is you don't want to have the foot right on the knee joint. Now for arms, we have options too. We can be right here at heart center. We can interlace the fingers, reaching the arms up and overhead. Maybe we find our goalpost arms or reaching back behind. We could have one hand on our heart, one hand on the belly. So lots of lots of options here. Kind of before we start to move into our tree though, get a visual of what you want your tree pose to look like on this side. And then as you have that in your head, checking in with your supporting foot and leg, making sure you have that nice strong base and then going ahead and finding your leg placement first, getting your balance, and then adding in your arms. Wonderful. Focusing on your breath, keeping the core strong to support you. And if you glance down just a few feet in front of you on the floor, finding one point to stare at that's not moving helps tremendously with your balance as well. Remember, nice deep breaths. Excellent job, everyone. Let's try just a few more moments here. Good, and then we'll release the arms and the leg, pedaling out the feet, very nicely done. And then we'll move to the other side. So again, taking that time, setting up the foot, setting up the leg, getting your strong, solid base here, and then getting your picture in your head of where your tree is going to look like on this side, and then heading that direction. Excellent. Knowing too that side to side is always a little bit different. We don't judge, we just notice. Nice deep breaths here still, in and out. Remembering to find that point on the floor to stare at to help with your balance if you need. And then we'll release here. Fabulous. Pedaling out the feet. Nicely done, everyone. Finding the back of your mat here. As we inhale, we'll reach our arms up and overhead. Exhale, swan dive all the way down. Again, bending the knees as much as you need to get the hands down, walking those feet a little bit wider. Hands coming right back out to down dog. Now, a little opportunity here to work the core a little bit more in your upper body if you like. Otherwise, you can hold here in your down dog and find your tabletop. Otherwise, we're going to shift back and forth between our down dog and our plank and then holding in plank and then lifting back up to down dog good and just moving here back and forth using the core again to initiate each movement Let's 
go one more time. And then from here, we're going to meet back down onto the belly. So a couple of different options. You can come back into our plank and chaturanga all the way down. You can come to the knees and lower yourself down onto the belly. So whatever you like, we'll come down and we're going to practice a little bit of back bending. We'll find our sphinx and um, perhaps our cobra pose as well. So to start, we're going to put our head all the way down onto the mat as we extend the arms straight out. Take a nice full body stretch here. Create that extra little bit of length. Good. And then we'll start to lift the head gently as we pull the el right elbow back and then the left elbow back so the elbows are right under the shoulders. Our palms are nice and spread. And we want to make sure that we're trying to look forward as best we can, relaxing through the glutes, relaxing through the legs. Now, if you're finding that this back bend is a little too high, to just walk the hands out a little bit and come down, take some of the pressure off. Crown of the head again, just reaching straight up. Head is neutral. Again, don't look around side to side. Good. Just a few more breaths. And then let's come all the way down. We'll make a nice pillow here to rest the forehead on with the forearms. Finding your neutral spine, and then we'll lift both feet and just tick tack them back and forth, side to side, kind of like windshield wipers. Helps to release the low back, any tension you may have been feeling there. Good, and then we'll let the feet come back down. Now, if you enjoyed Sphinx Pose, you can stay right there. If you want to go a little bit higher up in the back bend, we're going to practice Cobra as well. So if you want to try that option of Cobra, placing the forehead down on the mat, and then we'll bring the fingertips right underneath the blades of the shoulders so that if you reach the fingertips up, you'll be touching the tops of the shoulders. Elbows are going to be glued in nice and close to the body. Now remember, if you like Sphinx Pose and that felt good on the back, stay there. If you don't want to do any more back bending, just find your child's pose or any other position that feels safe and comfortable for you. Now we'll start to lift the head up and away from the mat here, pressing through the hands as we then lift through the chest and the belly, but keeping the elbows bent. The elbows don't straighten here, that's a different pose. The elbows stay bent, and we're just taking that little lift to get crowned of the head reaching up. And if we get here and we find this isn't working, we're going to bring the elbows right back down into our sphinx pose. So you've got options, or you're in your child's pose or whatever else is more comfortable. Good. Just a few more breaths. Excellent, and then we'll release ourselves all the way down, finding our neutral spine always first here. And then we'll slowly roll ourselves over onto the back. And then coming back down here. And then hugging both <clears throat> knees gently into the chest, really allowing that low back to release any tension. Maybe finding yourself just gently rocking side to side. Good, and then we'll let the left foot come down, straighten out as we hug the right knee into the chest. Right through the center here to start. Good, and then we'll just Gently pull the right leg slightly over to the right, feeling a gentle opening through the hips, through the inner thigh. And then finding our half happy, happy baby as we extend the right foot up, but keeping the right leg bent, having the right hand grab you either behind the right thigh or reaching up to find the outside of the right foot. Almost like you're in an upside down lunge, pulling that right knee over to the side, really opening there through the hips. Good. 
Good, and then we'll release the right foot, taking the right leg straight out on the mat as we hug then our left knee in right through the center to start. Good. And then over to the left, just that slight opening. And then coming to half a happy baby on this side, either holding on behind the left thigh or reaching up to find the outside of the left foot as you bend the left knee down. Go ahead, keep the breath steady. And now we'll release the left foot and the left leg as we take a full body stretch, reaching arms up and overhead, toes opposite direction. Good. And then we'll hug again, both knees into the chest for just a moment here. And then finding our full happy baby as we either hold on to the backs of the thighs or we reach for the outsides of each foot, opening the legs, opening the hips, finding that balancing point there. Maybe you find the eyes close. Excellent, and then we'll release the feet and we'll move into our Shavasana, our final relaxation which traditionally finds you resting flat on the back, but perhaps it feels good to have the knees bent or using a block or blanket for some extra support. Maybe, again, you want to cover up, find a sweatshirt, maybe a pair of socks here. And then getting into your comfortable position and perhaps even resting on the belly, too. Gently allowing the eyes to close, bringing your attention back inward, taking a moment to release through the forehead, unclenching the jaw, releasing the tongue. Allowing the shoulders to feel heavy as they melt down into the mat. Belly becomes soft. Arms and hands heavy at your sides, perhaps opening the palms up to the sky. And inviting your body to let go of any tension or any worry that you may be experiencing by silently saying to yourself, let as you inhale and go as you exhale. Inhale, let. Exhale, go. Inhale, let. Exhale, go. And then just continuing the mantra to yourself for a few moments, knowing that the earth will hold you and keep you safe until I come to call you back.
starting to bring your attention here back to your body small movements to your fingers toes wrists and ankles slowly waking everything back up and then reaching your arms up and overhead taking a nice full body stretch And as you're ready, hugging the knees gently into your chest and rocking yourself side to side. And then choosing one side and gently rolling there, pausing for just a moment. And then finally pressing yourself gently up to a seated position. We'll find our Sukhasana, our easy seated pose, as we take a few breaths together to end class. Good. So we'll reach the arms up as we inhale, and then exhale, release. Again, inhale, reaching up, and exhale. One more time, we'll inhale, reach up, Bringing the palms together. Exhale through heart center. Namaste. Thank you all so much for joining me and